Hello everyone, this is Andre from SWL. I want to talk to you about some of the remarkable firmware upgrades on this little SI4732 radio. This radio is quite remarkable already when you buy it with the stock firmware. It's very low price, it ranges between about $20 and $30, depends on where you buy it. Lately, there's also another version called AM in Vault, which usually has the best and latest firmware on it. The very first version had an issue with the output from the earphone jack that was very, very soft. That has been fixed in some of the later versions. I was lucky to get one. This is one of the original versions, I think, but on my one, the earphone output is fine. It works perfectly okay. So this radio is just remarkable. It covers the full FM band, the extended FM band. So for Brazil and Russia, it also works. It covers the full medium wave band. It covers the full short wave band. And it has SSP. So you can listen to utility signals and stuff. All of that for what? $30 or less. It's just amazing what you can get for that price. So the wonderful thing is that the firmware can be upgraded. And people have been working on new firmware versions all the time. I installed version 2.28 recently. I must say not by myself. I use a Linux computer and one of my viewers and also a friend, Allah from France, he helped me to do the Linux installation because doing it through Linux is a little bit, you know, it's a roundabout way. It's not that easy to do, but you can do it. Doing it on a Windows computer is a lot easier. And there is also a web utility that you can use. That is the easiest way. So let me just say outright, I'm not going to explain in this video how to do the updates. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of links in the description to this video where you can go and have a look. There is the GitHub site. There's a wonderful manual there and there's very, very clear explanations of how to do the updates. The best way to flash it, in my opinion, is to use the web utility. So I'll give you a specific link to that. That would be my recommendation. Version 2.27 is the one that I'm going to show you today. That is the one that I've got on here. And it fixed a lot of stuff that previously made this radio a little bit harder to use. There are five things specifically that I think that is quite remarkable now. The first versions of this radio had no time display. But now there is a time display which syncs automatically because this radio can connect to the internet also. That is one of the other upgrades. Also, you can now have a tuning dial displayed on the screen. I will show you that. That is really wonderful. That is what I like. But you can change the default look of your screen. The best upgrade, in my opinion, well, two of them. You can now do a type of direct tuning because the tuning on this one before was a little bit long-winded. It took very long because everything needs to be done with this one button here. But now there is a way to tune directly, which makes a massive difference. Then also, because it connects to the internet, you can download the EIBI schedules. And then the station name displays on the screen when you are DXing the correct name at the correct time because the time syncs to UTC automatically. That is wonderful. That is one of the best functions. I don't have any other radio that does that. So yeah, that is really, really great. So let's start. Let me show you. When I switch it on now, you will see immediately on the screen at the bottom, it will say connecting to the internet because I've already, mine is already connected. So it will show you what it does. Switch it on. Can you see connecting to Wi-Fi network very quick? As you can see, the default screen display now, there is a tuning dial at the bottom. So as you tune, it moves around. I love that. It feels like a little bit like an analog radio. So you've got it there. Of course, you can change the steps. There's a whole bunch of step options there. That's not changed really. You, you've got 1K, 5K, 9K, 10K, 50, 100, 1000. So a lot of steps. In the past, before I upgraded my firmware here, I used that 1000 one to jump quickly between different bands because the, you know, it took a while if you were just tuning at five kilohertz steps. Now there is another way, which I'm going to show you just now. So we've got this. The display looks a bit different. And as you can see there, it shows you the time. This is my local time, 1705. 
but the EIBI schedules that syncs automatically to UTC time. So it will display the correct station that you receive when you are tuning. I'm going to show you just now also how that works. So let me just show you if you go to settings, most of these settings here are still very similar to what they were in the previous versions. If you go to settings, you can see there is the Wi-Fi option, but there is an option here for UI layout. And this is where you can choose your default display. I'm here on the default option, but you also have the option for your S meter, for your signal strength down there. So you can select that as your default display, and then it looks like this. I like the option where my default display is the default, like that, with the tuning dial. I can see the time, and up there you can see the signal strength. So for me, this is fine. This works really quite well. So those are three of the really nice changes that I like a lot. You can see the time that wasn't there before. You can see the tuning dial, and you can change your default display here. Now, the best change, in my opinion, is that you can now load the EIBI schedules and see the station name, and there is a way to tune more directly. So when I'm doing shortwave DXing, as you can see there at the top, it shows all. I'm on all bands now, because when you go to the band options, you can select individual bands, and that would have been the best way to tune it before, because yeah, then it's easier to just jump around in that band where you are. But of course, it's a bit long-winded and it takes a while. So what I used to do, you can see all the bands are there. There's our medium wave, everything is there. SSB it takes you automatically to some of the ham bands and then switches automatically to SSB. If you go there, it's got CB band and the VHF, the FM band. But I used to go to all. All only covers HF, so the short wave bands. And I used to go to all, and then I used to change, like, for example, now you can see the step there is on 1,000. So this way you would have tuned in 1,000 kilohertz steps. That, you know, I would do that to jump to a band and then switch back again, change the step, switch back to 5K, and then do my tuning in 5K steps. Now, if you press and hold the tuning dial, and turn it. You can see that little arrow appearing there. And this way you can select which of these digits you want to tune. So I can go there to the zero and now I can tune there. Nice and quick. We'll hold it, select that, now it will jump much faster. Hold it again, go back to this one, now it will tune the thousand digits in thousand steps. So you can see this is almost like direct input. It's it's very, very quick now to go to the band or the frequencies that you want to tune. But now I want to tune around in the 25 meter band, so around about 11,500. So I'm going to press and hold this, go to that 5 of the 15, turn down, there I am. At 11,000, I can go there. It jumps now in 500 steps, there I am at 11,500 immediately in the 25 meter band, very easy. And as you can see there, it shows you the station name because I've obviously already loaded the EIBI schedules on mine, so it is there and it's displaying. So as you will tune now, and you come to stations, it will show you the station name. Dengue Gale, for example, I mean, the frequency jumps all the time, so they show all the frequencies where you can hear that station. But let us, do a quick tune and see if I can find something. I'm just going to put the volume a bit louder again so we can hear. Right, so as you can hear, this is NHK Japan. They identified themselves as NHK Japan. You could hear it. And the EIBI schedule there displays this is NHK Radio Japan. That's remarkable. That's wonderful. It changes your DXing experience so much because you can you can see the names jump up and you can try to listen to those stations. Wait a while if it comes in. As you hear something, it shows you what it is. Of course, it's not 100% correct. None of these schedules are always 100% correct. They might be missing stations. There might be some mistakes. 
But in general, I'd say 95 to 97% this is very, very correct. So it really makes a big difference. Let me just turn up the volume again a little bit so you can hear. This is NHK Radio Japan. Right, so you saw me there tuning to a number of other stations also. Voice of Vietnam was there, KCBS Pyongyang. Every time the name of the station appeared there. So to do the setup for this, also I'm not going to show you technically in this video now how to do the setup. The manual explains it very, very clearly. But to load the EIBI schedules, at first when I heard that you can do this, I thought it was a complicated, difficult process. But it's actually not. Because once you've got your new firmware, then you need to go to your settings. And in your settings, you will connect to your Wi-Fi. You will see there is a Wi-Fi option there. Um, so you do it once. You At first, you will only do... Um, they explain to you in the manual what, what you need to do. So at first, you need to turn it here, I think, to AP only. Um but the manual explains that link that I'm giving you in the description of this video, it explains to you step by step. I found this very, very easy to do. So you click on your settings, you click on Wi-Fi. It will tell you where to click here, what to do, how to connect. And then once you are connected, then you will need to go to settings again. And there is an option there, load EIBI. Now I've already done it. So, and it's very quick. You you click on that, um, you open it, and yeah, now it's loading it again for me. You can see there, it's loading EIBI schedule. It's it's updating, obviously, because I've already got it. And you just wait for the update, for the loading to finish, and it's done. And then you have your EIBI schedule loaded, and you can quite simply tune around and see what you are listening to. Remarkable. I mean, I don't know what else they are going to come up with in terms of firmware for this radio, but this is already such a wonderful radio. It's not noisy. It's very, very sensitive. It works really well on my MLA 30 plus. And with these additional functions, <laughs> I mean, it's almost a perfect radio and it's so small. It does overload a bit. I must add that when you go to um, the very low frequencies, I've noticed that it seems to pull in some medium wave frequencies and even short wave frequencies there that don't belong there. But apart from that, I really don't have any issues with this. It actually works very well. The SSB works very well. So it's just a terrific radio. If you're a beginner and you're looking to just explore shortwave a little bit, this is kind of the radio I would recommend these days because it's actually really easy to operate. Press this thing, turn, find what you want, press again, turn. Very easy to do. The firmware updates are not that difficult. Great radio. Terrific radio. You can see now. So my EIBI schedule staff updated now again. And it's probably still the same. Let's just go back. There we go. KCBS Pyongyang is still there. There we go. And that's it. I usually leave my Wi-Fi here on sync only. So occasionally it just syncs. I don't, um, it's not connected all the time. And that's it. So you can see the Wi-Fi symbol there at the top actually disappeared but every now and again you will see a little download arrow there on that side and that's when it's just syncing um, the eibi and also the the time so there you go five really remarkable upgrades i'm sure there are others but these are the ones that i find the best and the most functional it's worth it so hopefully those links i give you in the description of my video will help you if you want to upgrade and yeah have fun this is a terrific little radio. Andre the man from a land so wide.